Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be discussing how to maximize fuel economy by design. And as an example, we're going to be looking at a Shell Eco Marathon car, which is a car which is part of a competition in which students design and build vehicles with the sole purpose of maximizing fuel economy. So let's look at some of the different ways in which you would achieve this. Now the first topic I'd like to chat about is weight, as it's one of the most important ones in order to maximize fuel economy. A car that weighs less requires less energy to accelerate that mass and therefore it will get better fuel efficiency. Uh, and this is one of the most critical ones uh, along with aerodynamics, which of course plays a much bigger role as you get into higher speeds. So what are some of the ways that a car can reduce its weight? Now checking out the Shell Eco Marathon car, they've made use of a very thin carbon fiber body uh, which has a paper honeycomb core and they've also made use of an aluminum honeycomb monocoque which is both extremely light and also very strong. Something similar to this in the real world is the Koenigsegg Gera, which uses a carbon fiber body and also uses aluminum honeycomb within it as it is both extremely light and extremely strong. Aluminum in general is becoming an increasingly popular solution to minimizing vehicle weight. Uh, for example, a lot of engines these days, and probably the majority of them, both have aluminum block and head. Uh, also, Ford moved to an aluminum body with the new F-150. And on top of that, many companies are switching to aluminum components to be used within suspensions. So now let's move on to aerodynamics and basically here the whole idea is to minimize drag. Now the faster you are traveling the more drag you're going to have so aerodynamics is pretty much the most important factor for maximizing fuel economy when it comes to high speed travel. Now to determine uh, how much drag force you have on a vehicle that's simply the drag coefficient which is based on the shape of the vehicle. So something like a teardrop has a very aerodynamic shape and it has a very low drag coefficient versus something like a flat wall doesn't have a very uh, great drag coefficient going for it. The frontal area is also very important. So if you can make a vehicle very small uh, and when you're looking at it directly from the front, uh, if it's very small, it's going to have much less drag on it than a larger vehicle. You also have to factor in air density and then of course the velocity of the car that you are traveling in. So things like uh, small mirrors, active vents, and aerodynamics, things like this can change uh, the aerodynamics of the vehicle. You know, small mirrors for example, not only do they impact the drag coefficient, but they also impact the frontal area. So, you know, using small mirrors can be very beneficial in reducing drag on a vehicle. And keep in mind the speed that you're traveling at. So let's say you're going at 30 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour. Because drag force is exponential with speed, uh, when you're traveling at 30 miles an hour, you're going to have four times less drag than when you're traveling at 60 miles an hour. Moving on to drivetrain, this is of course critical to having a fuel efficient vehicle. Now smaller engines will use less gas at idle, they also have less internal friction uh, losses and they also weigh less which is very important. Having an engine that weighs less is pretty critical in achieving better fuel economy. So there's a lot of wins with smaller engines which is why the industry is kind of moving towards that trend. Now CVTs are also becoming increasingly popular as they allow the engine to operate uh, in its ideal RPM range rather rather than rev up uh, from low RPM where it may be inefficient, get into an efficient range, and then once again leave that efficient range. So by altering the transmission rather than the engine RPM, you can have increasing efficiency. Now also fewer driven wheels. So front wheel drive, you know, you're going to have pretty much the least amount of uh, power lost, assuming your engine is also mounted in the front. Uh, you could have the same situation if you have a rear mounted engine driving the rear wheels. Uh, but basically you want fewer driven wheels, all wheel drive, you're going to have more energy lost through the drivetrain. Higher compression ratio increases the thermal efficiency of the engine, so that's also important in achieving uh, high efficiency. And also a lot of manufacturers are moving towards lower viscosity grade oils to have less frictional losses within the engine uh, and throughout the drivetrain. Now checking out the Shell Eco Marathon car, this is a 125cc air-cooled four-stroke single cylinder engine which features four valves. It has a moderately high 10 to 1 compression ratio 
and this is matched with a CVT so that it can keep it in an efficient range. And also this is, the power is sent to a single driven wheel. Now a solution like this may not be realistic for a production car. However, having a single driven wheel in competition will allow for greater efficiency. Next, let's talk about wheels and brakes as this is another method of increasing efficiency. Um, and basically what you wanna be doing is reducing rotational inertia and you also wanna be reducing your rolling resistance. So by using uh, low rolling resistant compound tires, uh, as well as narrow tires with a higher pressure, uh, you can reduce your rolling resistance. Also, you know, you want to use bearings that are low friction. Um, and the other thing is you've got, so brake pads uh, in production cars are pretty much always uh, resting a little bit on the rotor and they're kind of just scraping by lightly. You want to make sure uh, that these brake pads aren't really rubbing the brakes at all so that you can maximize uh, efficiency and not lose any energy through that friction. You also want to use low weight wheels as this means you'll have less rotational inertia and less rotational inertia means you'll need less energy to accelerate with. Uh, you'll have less energy going into rotating that wheel and more into accelerating the car forward along with the benefit of just having less mass means you will accelerate faster. So checking out the Eco Marathon car, as you can see, very narrow tires. These are actually Michelin low rolling resistance tires and these are matched with ceramic wheel bearings. Now getting back somewhat into the drivetrain topic, hybrids and electrics uh, make great use of the efficiency of electric motors versus internal combustion engines uh, in order to maximize fuel economy. So electric motors are actually about 90% or greater than 90% efficient often and ICE engines are typically in the 25% to 35% range. So almost a third as efficient uh, as the electric motor. So when you can make use of electric motors, it's a much more practical and efficient manner of accelerating something. And the final topic I'd like to touch on is driving strategy. And this is one of the most important ones. Uh, you can dramatically improve or decrease the fuel economy you get in your car depending on how you drive. And this is probably a subject for a future video. But one of the ones I wanted to touch on which is very popular in the Shell Eco Marathon is called Burning Coast. And this is simply where you fire up the engine, you accelerate it for a bit, and then you turn off the engine, uh, which typically isn't legal to do uh, in the roads. But, uh, you know, in a competition like this, it's a very practical way of maximizing fuel economy. And so by turning off that engine, which when it's operating is only about 30% efficient, then you're now not having any of that energy lost and you're not using any fuel and you're still moving. So you maintain an average speed by going above that speed cutting the engine, driving for a bit until it slows down. This is where you want to have a low rolling resistance so you keep going for a good amount of time and a low aerodynamic drag so the car keeps rolling. And then you fire back up the engine when your speed gets too low in order to maintain an average speed. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll include some additional information if you're interested in the Shell Eco Marathon, which will be held in Detroit for 2015 in the video description.